Yes, many critics say that uh, your uh, works have a some relationship with pop art also. But uh, what do you think? Do you think that you have some affiliation with pop language, uh, language of pop art? No, I would say that I was also fascinated with pop artists, the way they applied, they have done it. In India, we did not have any equivalent word to the pop. Yeah. So, see, even our own street culture, our own um, craft, our own things, we could not coin a word equivalent to that and say. So, it has become easy to label everyone under pop. <laughs> Unless historians or thinkers, if they coin a word, <laughs> instead of using a pop, then it would have been much more appropriate. But pop art become because it has become so easy for everyone, once they said this, this then you put it on them. We mm. had such glaring, gla uh, I mean, capturing bright painted sculptures all over India, and still that is going on. So how can you say only pop art say why? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, but uh, terminology is being used to. Here sometimes they say kitsch. <laughs> so, they, they think that this is something very garish and very colourful and if something is very ga So, they, they think it is so loud. No, no, the basic uh, problem with us is that we were educated to like pastel shades, kind yeah. of a painting of French people's or British or Europeans' aesthetic sensibilities. Hmm. Because we were taught and our media is informed. But we had kish kind of what they now they think it's a mm. great invention but we had those kind of any rural festival you go and see those things are there in any village god goddesses are there any folk art is there any uh, jatra or anything mm. you see so these are part of our everyday culture living you know for us kish you call or you call it pop or it's, it's not a thing but uh, for them there they use those because they wanted to break their monotonous painting styles and they have started applying this bright and something juxtaposing and they were labelled. In fact, installation art is everywhere in India. You go to Rajasthan yeah. or South, you will see many installation yeah. there uh, using all these things. Yeah. So, but you, you… But I never minded if people are saying pop or you see it is their interpretation, I cannot go and say, no, I am not a pop artist, mm. I am not a kish artist. Mm. It is your liberty to label it and put it, so why should I? As long as what I am doing is people are looking at it. Because you are known for your female figures and heads, basically yes. because you are, whenever your name comes yeah. come with that image. So you have, uh, what about your personal life experience of female uh, forms and how do you see that thing? See, basically when I have seen, we had full figures, such lively figures all around surrounded us, like from painting to temple sculpture to historical museum or in folk and tribal art. And unfortunately, that element was missing in contemporary art. Even if it is done figure, it was like very stylized and very so I said, what is wrong with our sensibilities where, why can't we represent a full bodied figure in its own, it should be standing on its own merit, you know. Why have to we stylize and or make it like a, a European sculptors who did, you know. Like there are many French sculptors who have like, I mean, <coughs> very stylized kind of forms, the abstract come stylized. So I, said, I went, I said, I didn't like those kind of things, why not do like a, inspired by Khajuraho painting, sculptures, mm -hmm. or Amravati reliefs, you know. We have such good background to lean upon and learn from them and interpret what is your present society and from draw inspiration from that and do it. This is not a big issue and uh, you don't have to break your brains. It's only looking through your eyes and responding to it by heart and doing it. <laughs>